Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the severe thunderstorms we're seeing um, over parts of the country and we'll also have a look at the heavy rain that are going to follow this pattern of thunderstorms as low pressure is taking control and we'll also have a look at the GFS East and WF and GFS ensembles at the longer range, longer range outlook and again it doesn't look particularly encouraging things are looking very wet and unsettled and even on the cold side of what we should normally be seeing um, this time of the summer so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you do like and subscribe and do remember to follow me on twitter as well link is in the description now i did say in yesterday's video we were going to be seeing some very intense thunderstorms and today that's a possibility upgraded and we did see an amber warning put in force over northern Scotland where we have these very intense thunderstorms at the moment and they really haven't moved too much throughout today. They're being helped by the air being forced up over the mountains and it's meaning we've got these big thunderstorms developed. Um, and we also have some thunderstorms for the southwards in the um, yellow warning zone in the north. Um, and again, a few showers further south and further southeast, but not generally producing too much lightning. But um, you can see we still do, of course, have showers um, further southwards as well. And there have been some heavy showers coming through where I am in London, uh, but not really any lightning activity or anything at the moment. But it does show you big contrast to what we saw over the last few weeks where normally the dry weather has been further northwards and the big thunder activity has been in the south it's been sort of flipped in reverse with the big thunderstorms further northwards um producing a lot of rain you can see the weather front that is out over northern ireland at the moment producing persistent persistent rain that is going to sweep northwards and once these thunderstorms start to clear that uh, weather front's going to take over and it's going to stall over northern scotland and that's why we have a amber warning for rain as well through Wednesday and Thursday. So some areas in Northern Scotland are going to be an amber warning for the next three days with the possibility of well over 100 millimetres uh, of rain over that time, if not 200 millimetres, um, if they also see some very severe thunderstorms today. If we do have a look at the... Uh, if we do have a look at the latest on the past 24-hour rainfall um, estimates... You can see where we've had the very intense thunderstorms over northern Scotland in the amber warning zone. We've seen some very intense amount of rain between 40 and 60 millimetres already in a few locations. And that will only increase this evening, potentially getting up towards 80 or 100 millimetres as we still have many cells, many active cells um, over northern Scotland. Very heavy rain in Northern Ireland because of that uh, persistent rain. That's going to fade a lot this evening and move north eastwards. But then across the whole of England and Wales, you can see a lot of rain. Pretty much everywhere has seen some form of rain today in England and Wales. A few areas in the northeast and a few areas just north of London into East Anglia have missed out on a bit of rain. But you can see where we've had the lines of heavy, sh heavy, sh heavy showers. And you see where we've had a few thunderstorm outbreaks just north of Birmingham uh, in Lincolnshire. Um, and then also up towards Yorkshire as well. A few thunderstorm outbreaks, and then again one down into Portsmouth, where we've seen uh, getting up to around 40 or 50 millimetres of rain, mostly in the yellow warning zone further northwards. So if we now have a look at the weather warnings, um, you can see at the moment we've got the yellow warning in the north of England, then we've got another yellow warning in Scotland, and then, and then this amber warning that was put in force across um, Scotland as well. And you can see how between, oh, well, it was enforced early this morning at around 11.39, and it's from, it was from 12 until 10 p.m. tonight. So by 10 p.m., those intense thunderstorms should start to fade, but I'm guessing there still be will still will be some quite heavy rain around. Uh, locally, um, 60, 80 millimetres is possible, and you saw by those precipitation estimates, we've seen 50 or 60 in a few locations already, and... Um, uh, still could be some more and you can set it see at the end showers will start to merge longer spells of rain in the evening but easing in intensity and that's why that amber warning will start to diminish if we look at wednesday you can see there is a widespread thunderstorm warning again in northern england but more of a rain and then an amber warning for rain in scotland because we're still going to have low pressure coming through the middle of the country and its weather front's going to be across Scotland, but we're still going to have clearer skies with clouds bubbling up and thunderstorms. That's why we've got this risk in the north. But if I look at the yellow warning for am uh, yellow amber warning, it's from tomorrow 6 a.m. all the way till Thursday 6 a.m. So Thursday shouldn't have too much disruption, um, but still probably rush hour in the morning. 
could still have some heavy rain around. And you can see further details, rain will turn to persi uh, turn persistent across much of northern Scotland through Wednesday and overnight into Thursday with some heavy outbreaks. This will lead to large accumulations of building. Uh, eastern part of Great Glen and around Inverness, where accumulations of 80 to 100 millimetres are possible in 24 hours, with 60 millimetres widely. And, and they said, as they said here, given the rainfall of recent days, it's expected to lead to some surface water flooding and disruption. And it's because we've got those thunderstorms today, or we're going to give it 50 millimetres plus in a few locations, on top of the potentially 60 or 80 to 100 millimetres. And that's where we could see some big, big disruption. If we also do have a look briefly now, just at the lightning activity, I always like to have a look at this, see what's happening. You see with the active cells at the moment, we've got a few active cells in the yellow warning zone, not too much further southwards, and I think these are just clipping the bottom of the yellow warning zone, and then we've got those big active thunderstorms in that amber warning zone across northern Scotland, or southern Scotland, central areas into northern Scotland. Um, so very intense thunderstorms there, and if you are in Scotland, make sure you keep an eye out for that. Not only for the th thunderstorms today, but if you have seen a lot of rain today, do keep our eyes out over the next couple of days, or even though over the next couple of days the rain is going to be lighter, it's, it's going to be persistent, and on top of the amount of rain we've seen over the last couple of days, it could produce some issues, even though it doesn't look too heavy. So if we now have a look at the Cape charts, just to run through that quickly. So you can see, of course, the England Cape is mainly in the north of England um, into Scotland. There is some Cape further southwards, and then, of course, that has produced a few showers, but not really too many thunderstorms have popped off. But you see that Cape eventually dissipates around 10, 11 p.m., and that's why the Met Office has that amber warning expiring at 10 p.m. You can see Cape does diminish further northwards, potentially over northeast Scotland. We could see some more storms, potentially, but it's because the weather front's taking over. And then we have that cape further southwards in that yellow warning zone, and we could see some further thunderstorms there through tomorrow. Eventually, cape does diminish for rule overnight, and then through Thursday, it does look like not too much activity, um, just sort of light patchy rain around, and not too much um, convective potential there. So if we do have a look at the raw precipitation charts, you can see at the moment we've got that very heavy rain of Scotland, still a few showers for, uh, for the southwards, and a lot in northern England. You can see that weather front over the course of Northern Ireland, quite persistent, and then it shifts into Scotland, sort of merges with those thunderstorms as well, be an interesting transition from thunderstorms to persistent rain, some areas the rain might not even let up, it might go from heavy thunderstorms, and then a couple hours later you're just under a band of persistent rain, and then through Wednesday, you can see that heavy persistent rain over Northern Scotland, potentially clearing for a time before sinking back southwards through early Thursday morning. Elsewhere, further showers, but nothing um, too disruptive. Just a yellow warning in force for the potential of a few isolated intense storms. And then through Thursday, those weather fronts do sink away, and eventually things look a little bit brighter for all and a little bit drier before there's still some rain further southwards. And of course, we're under low pressure influence, there's always going to be some more showers around as well. If we now have a look at the icon run, we'll just have a look at that precipitation as well. You can see very heavy rain over North Scotland at the moment and across Northern England. And then the weather front bumps into that. And you can just see this really messy picture on the icon. Because it's not uh, the highest resolution model, it's a much higher resolution model than we have with the GFS or the GM. But it's not as high resolution model as the WF or the UK Met Office run. So we do get a bit of a mess when we have big areas of low pressure with very complex uh, stuff going on with thunderstorms and sun parts in the weather front. And you can see it comes in a bit of a messy picture by tomorrow afternoon. But generally, we have thunderstorms across many central areas into northern areas. Won't be as widespread as this showing. Not all areas will see rain. But you can see where the heavier cells are, or the, heavy, or the, dark, or the lighter colours is where we're going to see the heavier cells. And then you can see the persistent band over Scotland. That will eventually sink southwards, dissipating. And then potential for Friday. We saw that on the WRF sinking um, well, a bit further southwards and clipping southeast areas. But we could see a period of very heavy rain into Kent, potentially the London area as well through Friday early morning. But what it does look like Saturday will not have too much persistent rain around, but we'll still have, of course, a lot of sunshine and showers. Um, and then again through Saturday and Sunday, more sunshine and showers as well. If we do have a look at the precipitation accumulations, you can see it has upgraded overnight since the last icon run, with many areas going around 40, 50 millimetres. Now some regions in that amber warning for rain and thunderstorms has gone up to 60, 70, or even higher than that in a few locations. Most other areas, 
will be very isolated where we see the very um, high rainfall totals. But of course, we do see some thunderstorms in that yellow warning zone. There could be some isolated disruption. But at this stage, it isn't looking um, too, uh, too bad at this stage. It's really northern Scotland where the focus is at. If we have a look at the UK Met Office run, you can see at the moment, big thunderstorm in North Scotland and generally another smackering of heavy showers and a few isolated storms. So that weather front merges with those thunderstorms. Over tonight, as those thunderstorms fade away, they sort of merge with the weather front and we just see persistent rain across northern Scotland for most of tomorrow before it starts to sink southwards through Thursday morning. And you can see, again, another rash of heavy showers tomorrow. So a lot of areas are going to see some rain at some points. You may even see a burst of 10 or 15 minutes of very heavy rain. Um, but it's not looking like a complete washout. Some areas, of course, in that yellow warning zone may see some thunderstorms. Uh, but we'll have to just have to keep an eye on the radar, really, for that. It's very difficult to uh, forecast exactly where these storms uh, will pop off. And then through Thursday morning, that weather front will sink southwards, potentially bringing some further rain into uh, southern Scotland and northern England before eventually dissipating away. And then through Thursday afternoon, a lot of sunshine and showers, especially further northwards. And then Friday, once again, is sunshine and showers, but that potentially very heavy rain moves in through th Friday afternoon, much further northwards, affecting parts of south, south Wales, southwestern areas, for sort of fizzling out as it reaches eastern areas. But still could be some very heavy rain around across the south on Friday. So we really have to keep an eye on that. There's does look very suspicious seeing the amount of uncertainty between this run, uh, the UK Met Office, and the icon of the WRF, all showing different tracks, quite substantially different tracks. And this would be a very interesting feature in the winter, of course, as this is channel low and would produce um, quite a few inches of snow if we did uh, if we did have this coming off in December to February. So very interesting to see that coming off. We'll just have to keep an eye on its, on its exact track over the next couple of days. If we now have a look at the GFS, we'll run through that briefly. Um, you can see at the moment we've got that low pressure moving in, and that's going to bring that persistent rain to northern Scotland for the next couple of days. Eventually we'll clear out to the North Sea and we'll go into a northerly wind. Now, we're not under the centre of the low, but then we're not under the centre of a high either, so we're sort of in between. So it's going to be a lot of showers, but still some spells of sunshine. Um, but it's not looking particularly warm if we have a look at the upper air temperatures. You can see coming in from the north, so even though the upper airs are not freezing cold, they're coming from a cold direction, so at the surface level, it could be pretty chilly, especially further, further northwards and further southwards may only struggle to get into the, the uh, around 20 or 21 degrees. Beyond that, we go into a very westerly phase with more low pressure rattling off the Atlantic, and as we head to 240 hours, more low pressure coming in, and it's not looking particularly pleasant at all. There could be brief areas of high pressure, especially, especially further southwards and westwards as the Azores high tries to push up. But generally, low pressure will always be in control in the north. And as we're 384 hours, you can see high pressure is having a go at taking back control. But always that low around Iceland trying to push it away. So it doesn't look too encouraging, but there could be some brief drier and warmer spells in the south as we head into August. So if we now have a look at the ECMWF, if we run through that over the next um, few days, you can see that northerly wind coming in. High pressure does try and build in, does build in maybe next Sunday and Monday, very briefly, um, for low pressure rattlism off the Atlantic. And we go into another quite wet and windy spell with low pressure coming off the Atlantic, unfortunately. If we now have a look, lastly, at the GFS ensembles, we look at the temp temperature at 850 HPA and precipitation. You can see generally temperatures are below average for the foreseeable future. Some points could be well below average, with the average this time of year, or the well, 1981 to 2010 mean, being around 9, 8, 9, 10 degrees at 850 HPA. And some of these points, the average of the ensemble members is down to maybe only five degrees or so, so a good four or five degrees potentially below average at times. So pretty chilly out there. In the longer term, there are a few warm ensemble members, but they are in a minority and generally still looks below average or around average all the way until early, uh, early to mid-August. So not looking too encouraging for those hot weather fans out there. You can see there are some quite large precipitation spikes starting to show up, which could Im implicate uh, weather fronts moving in potentially on sort of 30th to 31st overnight there. And again, through much of late July, early August, very unsettled with a lot of rain and showers around. So not looking great at all um, for dry and hot weather fans. But anyway, 
Make sure if you are in Northern England and Northern Scotland at this stage, make sure you keep an eye out for um, the rain and the thunderstorms, um, as it could provide some decent disruption in some locations. So just really keep an eye out. And, and as I always say, when we have thunderstorms, don't drive through any floodwaters and don't take any risks. It's not worth it. Um, and just make sure you do stay safe out there. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.